it's often to the worldly person mysterious how a person could be such as that, not affected by these things. And if one isn't affected, wouldn't such a person be indifferent? Often, I think this is a common thought that people have. Well, if I don't desire anything of this world, if, uh, uh, if I'm not attached to what happens, good, bad, positive, and negative, I must not care. There must be a certain indifference. Why should I do anything if I don't have a desire to do something? But again, the secret is given here in the commentary in this case. Swamiji mentions that yes, the uh, the sage or the wise person is whole in themselves and has no desire for himself. But he does have a desire, in a sense, a desireless desire, because his only desire is to be helpful and to help other people. But he's not indifferent by any means. You could say that uh, if you look at the example of saints throughout history, I'm sure all of you have read biographies or autobiographies of saints, and one thing that is absent in the lives of all saints is indifference. You never find that. They're not indifferent. They're, they're, they're usually joyful. They're, they're full of life, they're energetic, they're wanting to the, uh, uh, to the greatest maximum ability that they have to be able to serve and to, and to work and to help other people. This is the mark of the saint. Indifference is hardly that at all. It's, but they may be indifferent to the outward satisfactions of the world, but they're not indifferent to life and they're certainly not indifferent to the travails and the troubles of people around them and the situation uh, that's going on around them. They're highly engaged in that way. It's like Master used to say, Paramahansa Yogananda used to say, a sad saint is a sad saint indeed. Well, you could say the same thing. An indifferent saint is certainly not a saint at all to be totally indifferent. I remember there was a time that Swami Kriyananda spoke of in his life where he had, we went through a, a, a difficult time in his life after his separation from Self-Realization Fellowship because he didn't know how he could serve his guru. It seemed that the blocks his, of, had been erected for his ability to serve other people. And so he was, he, it was a difficult time for him. But he said in the midst of all of those troubles that he had and the catastrophe that it seemingly was for him on the outward side, he said and during that whole time, he always knew that on some very deep level there was this ocean of joy, very calm, underneath. But on the top of the ocean there were these waves of, of perhaps a little bit of doubt as to how he might serve his guru or a little bit of discouragement on the surface. But he said underneath he could always tell that that was there. Look at the life of Paramahansa Yogananda. He was a saint of great vitality, great joy. You look at his guru, of course, Swami Sri Teshwar was a man of wisdom. And outwardly, he didn't seem to be, he didn't seem that outwardly exuberant type of personality as you might see in some saints. But nevertheless, nevertheless, you could see he certainly was not indifferent to life. He, was, he cared deeply for life. And it was because of his care and his wish to serve other people that Babaji recognized that great desire that he had to be able to share these teachings with other others that he met him at that story that's told of, it, of Babaji meeting him at the Kumbh Mela and told him that in the years ahead he would send a student to him to be trained to be able to take these teachings of Kriya Yoga to reach out to millions of souls around the world. So this is a, this is a, a mark of a great saint. Just to balance that though, it, uh, I remember a story that uh, you know, I'm reminded of this, that Swami met a uh, very elderly sadhu once in Puri. And the sadhu was quite elderly, quite old. And so Swamiji said obviously the sadhu had certain uh, uh, advancement in his spiritual progress, but he was, he was reputed to be a hundred and 30 years old, so obviously if he was, uh, that's remarkable. But he said this sadhu had, the, had that disposition of, of advising Swamiji, in this case, and advising those people that came to him for advice to, advice to not 
engage in any in involvement in the world, to not enjoy anything. And so Swami was quite surprised at this because this was not the way of Paramahansa Yogananda. And you could say it goes a little bit counter to what I'm, I'm saying. But nevertheless, there are exceptions, and this man was one, but because he had some, but he had something else. And so Swamiji asked him, he said, can I not even enjoy a sunset, a beautiful sunset? And this sadhu said, no, not even that. And Swamiji was very respect, respectful to him because obviously the man was, a, was, was an accomplished soul. So he didn't want to, want to argue. But afterwards, uh, after telling that story, Swami said he went away and he said, how dry that is to be able to not even enjoy the beauties of this world. That Paramahansa Yogananda was never like that. He said he enjoyed everything. But he didn't enjoy it outwardly and for its sake. He enjoyed it inwardly because he had found his joy inside.